Revista de verbos en el pretérito y cuándo usarlo. We're going to review preterite tense verbs and when to use them. ¿Qué es el pretérito? What is the preterite? Well, the preterite tense is the simple past tense. It's used to indicate that an action was completed in the past at a specific point in time in the past. Usually, there's a definite beginning or ending time stated. Indicadores. These are some of the indicator words that let you know that you want to use the preterite tense. Ayer, which is yesterday. Anteayer, which is the day before yesterday. Anoche, last night. La noche pasada, which is also last night. El lunes pasado, el martes pasado, last Monday, last Tuesday, etc. La semana pasada, last week. El mes pasado, o el año pasado, last month, last year. I think you see where this is going. En 1992, en 1986, en 2008, so in some year. Hace tres meses, hace cinco meses, basically three months ago, five months ago, and it follows the pattern. Verbos regulares en el pretérito. Let's start with regular verbs in the preterite. Conjugating verbs in the preterite tense works exactly the same way as conjugating verbs in the present tense. You take the AR, ER, or IR ending off, and you add the appropriate subject ending. The difference is that the preterite endings are different from the present tense endings. The AR endings in the preterite are E for yo, aste for tu, o for el or ella or usted, amos for nosotros, hasteis for vosotros, and aron for ellos, ellas, or ustedes. It is important to notice that the amos ending for nosotros is exactly the same as the present tense ending for nosotros. You just have to tell from the context whether it's present or past. The accent marks on the endings are very important. For example, the difference between hablo, without an accent mark on the O, and hablo, with an accent mark on the O, is the difference between I speak and he spoke. Here's an example of a regular AR verb in the preterite. Cantar is a regular AR verb. We take the AR ending off and our stem is cant. When we add the preterite endings, we add E for yo and we have canté. We add aste for tu and we have cantaste. We add O for el, ella, or usted, and we have canto. We have cantamos for the nosotros, just like in present tense, and we have cantaron for ellos, ellas, and ustedes. Okay, let's do a little practice with regular AR verbs in the preterite. The yo ending is a. E with an accent mark. If our verb is hablar and our subject is yo, then we will have yo hablé con Anita. The to ending would be aste. So with the regular verb cantar, we would have Cantaste tu en el coro? Did you sing in the choir?
Okay, the third person singular ending in the preterite for AR verbs is O, or the O with an accent mark. For the regular verb levantar, that would make it levanto. That gives us, mi amigo levantó el papel. My friend picked up the paper, or raised the paper. We do the same ending with caminar because la amiga is also third person singular. So we would have, la amiga de Sara caminó a la escuela. Sarah's friend walked to school. Just like in the present tense, in the preterite tense, the nosotros ending for AR verbs is amos. So for the regular verb bajar, we would have nosotros bajamos las manos. And we would just have to tell from the context whether we meant we lower our hands or we lowered our hands. The third person plural ending is aron. You use that with ellos or ellas they, or with ustedes, the plural you. With the regular verb saltar, we would have y ustedes, saltaron en la sala de clase, and y'all, did you jump in the classroom? With los otros chicos, it would be the same ending because it would be they, so with the regular verb regresar, we would use regresaron. Los otros chicos regresaron de España hoy. The other kids came back from Spain today. In the preterite, ER and IR verbs have exactly the same endings. The ending for yo is I. That's I with an accent mark. The ending for tu is iste. The ending for the third person, el, ella, or usted, is io. And there is an accent mark. The ending for nosotros is imos. Now that's exactly the same as the present tense IR ending. So that's another one that you're just going to have to use context clues. The vosotros ending is isteis. The third person plural ending, for ellos, ellas, and ustedes, is hieron. Let's use comer as an example of a regular ER verb in the preterite. If I want to say, I ate, I would say, comí. You ate, comiste. He ate, or she ate, or that formal you, usted ate, comió. We ate, Nosotros comimos. They ate or y'all ate, ellos, ellas, or ustedes, would be comieron. Let's use escribir to write um, as the example for an IR verb. Yo escribí, tú escribiste, él or ella or usted escribió. Nosotros escribimos, and remember that's exactly the same in present tense, so you do need to use context clues there. Ellos, or ellas, or ustedes escribieron. Okay, let's do a quick little review with ER verbs. The ending for yo is i, so yo bebí leche, I drank milk. The ending for tú would be iste. So, ¿vendiste tú libros en el mercado? Did you sell books at the market? The ending for third person singular is yo. So, mi amigo comió hamburguesas. My friend ate hamburgers. La amiga de Sara conoció a Carlos. Sarah's friend knew Carlos or met Carlos. Nosotros Cogimos las manzanas que la profesora tiró. We caught the apples that the teacher threw. 
¿Y ustedes? ¿Aprendieron ciencias y inglés? And you all, did you learn science and English? And the other one that uses the ieron ending, los otros chicos debieron estudiar el español. The other kids should study Spanish. Now let's do a little bit of practice with regular IR verbs. Remember that the IR endings in preterite are exactly the same as the ER endings. So, yo viví con Anita. I lived with Anita. ¿Escribiste tú los libros? Did you write the books? Mi amigo escribió el papel en inglés. My friend wrote the paper in English. La amiga de Sara descubrió el gato en la casa. Sarah's friend discovered the cat in the house. Nosotros vivimos en Carolina del Sur. We lived in South Carolina. And remember, that's exactly the same in present tense and preterite, so you have to use context there. ¿Y ustedes escribieron en el papel? And y'all, did you write on the paper? Los otros chicos escribieron la carta en español. The other kids wrote the letter in Spanish. Unos verbos irregulares en el pretérito. Some irregular verbs in the preterite. Ser, ir, hacer, dar, y ver. Note bien. Pay attention. Ser and ir are identical in the preterite tense. You just have to use the context to determine the meaning. So what do they look like if they're the same? Yo fui can mean either I went or I was. Tu fuiste can mean either you went or you were. El fue, he went or he was. Ella fue, she went or she was. Usted fue, you went or you were. Nosotros fuimos, we went or we were. Vosotros fuisteis, that's that one that they only use in Spain. Uh, and that's either y'all were or y'all went. Ellos fueron, they went or they were. Ellas fueron, they went or they were. And it was all girls. Ustedes fueron, y'all went or you all were. Did you notice something different? Irregular verbs in the preterite in Spanish do not have accent marks on them. Dar is an AR verb, but it's conjugated in the preterite almost as if it were an ER or an IR verb. Yo di, I gave. Tu diste, you gave. El dio, ella dio. Usted dio, he gave, she gave, you gave. Nosotros dimos, we gave. Vosotros disteis, that's that one from Spain, y'all gave. Ellos dieron, or ellas dieron, they gave. Ustedes dieron, y'all gave. The conjugation of ver in the preterite looks just like dar, except that there's a V instead of a D. So yo vi, I saw. Tu viste, you saw. El vio, he saw. Ella vio, she saw. Usted vio, you saw. Nosotros vimos, we saw. Vosotros visteis, y'all saw in Spain. Ellos vieron, or ellas vieron, they saw, ustedes vieron, y'all saw. There are some stem-changing verbs in the preterite tense. These verbs have irregular stems, but, again, the irregular verb endings do not have written accent marks. The stems may be irregular, but the endings follow a pattern. The yo ending is e, just an e, no accent mark. The tu ending is iste. The el, ella, or usted third person singular ending is o, just o, no accent mark. The nosotros ending is imos. The vosotros ending is isteis. And the third person plural. The ellos, ellas, ustedes ending is hieron. 
For verbs with irregular stems, you just have to learn the stems. The verb andar, the stem becomes anduv. The verb estar, the stem becomes estuv. The verb poder, the stem becomes pud. And the verb poner, the stem becomes pus. The verb querer, the stem becomes kis. The verb saber, the stem becomes sup. The verb tener, the stem becomes tub. The verb venir, the stem becomes bin. The verb decir, the stem becomes dich. There's one more very common stem changing verb, and that's a special case. The verb hacer, the stem becomes is, and in order to keep the sound correct in the third person singular, the C is changed to a Z. So you have yo hice, tu hiciste, el hizo, ella hizo, usted hizo, nosotros hicimos, vosotros hicisteis, ellos hicieron, ellas hicieron, ustedes hicieron. One more thing. AR and ER verbs that stem change in the present tense do not stem change in the preterite tense. IR verbs that stem change in the present tense do stem change in the preterite, but there's a difference. They only stem change in the third person, and then the E changes to I or the O changes to you. For example, preferir becomes prefirió or prefirieron, dormir becomes durmió or durmieron.